Okay, folks, um, what I want to cover today basically has to do with cuckoo clocks. I got um, this antique cuckoo clock uh, last year sometime at a garage sale. And <clears throat> I've been looking online for things to do to fix it up and, you know, how to, how to repair these things and everything. And there is some information out there on, on cuckoo clocks, but it's very limited in, in uh, it seems like there's some things that are really really simple about these things that it takes a while to figure out and find somebody that or some some information on the internet about it to help you out so uh, I just wanted to cover this real quickly um, basically this is a an antique cuckoo clock and um, it's just just a simple you know bird in the it's a one day uh, time in other words you gotta you gotta pull this chain each day to, to um, wind it up and it's only gonna last 24 hours now one thing is that I didn't realize till later on is that these chains uh, before you like if the cuckoo clocks hanging on the wall the first thing you should do is remove the weights and to and to gather these chains together let me get some light on that so you can see what I'm doing. Gather the chains together like this and tie a wire tie around them. This is while it's in the upright position. You want to do this before you take it off the wall. Do both both chains, or if you got three chains, do all three chains. Use one of those bread ties, you know, just the little wire ones. And what that'll do is keep it from coming off of the gears inside. The chain, once it comes off that those gears inside it could be a pain in the neck you have to turn the clock upside down do this with the chain and all that jazz like I'm gonna have to do with this one to uh, get it to work right now when you when you work on these and you turn it over keep in mind this uh, hour hand a minute hand stem here you don't want to bend it you don't want to break these hour hands the clock hands and stuff so uh, either get you uh, some blocks of wood or or some other device to keep that thing from uh, being crushed or bent. Now I I'm just going to use this little dish here, a little Tupperware bowl here for right now. I'm just going to set that on there and open up the back. Now you see, one common thing about about these things. Is that when uh, when they stop cuckooing, but they keep time and everything else seems to be working, but the cuckoo st it seems to run, but you don't hear anything or there's a muffled sound maybe. That could be because of these bellows up here on the tops of these whistles. Okay, this is a uh, this is a bellows chamber, and then there's a whistle in there, and you can see on the side a hole in the side of the cuckoo clock and that's basically you can see the whistle inside and the sound comes out of that hole all right now what happens is the bellows gets very old and after time uh, the bellows will crack and deteriorate the paper on the bellows or if it's really old it, it's, it could be that it is um, kid skin like a goat kid they used to use that skin to make these bellows out of well they don't use that anymore you can get that but it's going to take you a while to find it and I wouldn't even waste my time with it unless you got a, a valuable antique cuckoo clock that's worth a lot of money I wouldn't even I would just go with the, the cuckoo clock paper now as far as paper goes um, one of the things that I found online is there's different types of paper and, and there's a there's a concern about uh, whether people are selling improper paper online and uh, and I could see why there's there is a, here's a sample of the uh, correct kind of cuckoo clock paper 
I just want to show you what it looks like. I've cut some off of this before and done a repair before, but this is, uh, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can get a... Alright, this is the perforated. You see the perforations? In this, uh... Paper. Alright. This is a Tyvek, Tyvek paper. And, and here you can see fiber in the paper. It's very strong paper. You can pull on it, you know, and it's not going to tear. This, so this kind of paper lasts a long time. It's been perforated. This is a thin version and very pliable version of Tyvek. Tyvek can be very stiff. Uh, I know there's some people saying uh, that to save money, go down to the post office and get some of that postal those postal envelopes that's made of Tyvek, the white ones that are that have their you know the red and blue ink on them for free <laughs> for the free ones for shipping priority mail. Um, they're made of Tyvek, but it's not perforated like this and it's not very pliable. It's very stiff and it's going to be thicker than this. This is a thinner a thinner Tyvek. It's really nice. Uh, and I don't I don't know. There may even be other types of paper, but um, this is this is this perforated stuff is basically a good a good paper, and it's going to be uh, you're going to be able to fold this and everything. But if you use that stuff on that envelopes from the post office, um, it'll fold and, and everything. But then when you when you you go to um, notice how this like like okay this is a this is a bellows that I bought online, okay, pre-made. All right, and notice how when it when it closes, it's nice and flat. If you use that stuff on the envelope, what's going to happen is it's going to be too thick. It's not going to close all the way. You're going to have to add weights to the top and stuff, so that so that the top can push it down with the weight. So rather than do all that, get get the proper kind of paper, okay? So you can either do it yourself by buying the paper, or you can buy it pre-made. Um, I think I bought two of these for something like uh, ten bucks, ten or twelve dollars. I don't know, depending on the size, and uh, you know, carefully looking at the auctions. Well, this would be an appropriate time to share with you some information about buying these bellows online. First and foremost, you got to realize they're not all the same size. Depending on your clock, you're going to need to measure both width and length of your bellows. And in particular, you really need to be careful with the orientation of the hole that the air passes through and that's for left and right sides so there is some homework to do uh, if you're not going to make your own bellows paper and glue it on yourself you're going to order these off online you got to really make sure those holes are oriented in the proper corners or in the proper position to line up with the bellows chamber otherwise you're going to have difficulties in, in you know you have to return them and then try and get some more back also something to consider is that if you're going to order these online they won't come with any of the they usually won't come that is let me let me restate that they won't they usually will not come with the wires the little pins the, the little eyelet hoops for the lift rods to attach to the bellows on the inside of the clock. So retain your old ones. Remember that. Retain your old bellows parts so that you can see exactly where those uh, eyelets were inserted, how deeply they were inserted, any other things like some of them have little wires that run up and lift the tail of the cuckoo or trip some other switch or something so you need to make sure you save all that hardware that came on the original bellows and then reapply it to the new bellows when you get them.
So you can see that it's not always easiest to order pre-made bellows. Sometimes it's just easier to get the paper and make it yourself because then all the hardware will be on it, the holes will be in the right orientation. You won't uh, be worry, worried about getting something that won't fit or won't work for you after waiting for it for a week or two. Okay, now these mount to the tops of these bellows chambers. All right, and then your your uh, wire mechanisms hook up to them, and, and they'll open and close this bellows with the wire when when the hour and a half hour comes up. But uh, it, when you 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 need to glue, you just put see where the old glue on this one was. You'll put this glue around here and and glue it to the proper place you know that's what's best about doing it yourself with the paper getting the paper and doing it yourself um, you, you'll be you'll remove the old or leave it on there and, and just do it while it's on there and you'll see where where it was glued before the exact position and you won't get it messed up um, unless you know a little bit about cuckoo clocks and and stuff you know you buy pre pay pre um folded bellows like this then you know you may have a little bit of, of a challenge a little bit of a challenge locating the place the proper place to glue it all right now these will remove with a simple single screw right there and this one has a little nail in the side of it no big deal sometimes they're glued on the side as well uh, but it's not very much and you can pop that loose really simply very easily now there seems to be a uh, for whatever reason here here's some more for for another cuckoo clock that I've got <clears throat> that I ordered online pre papered and then uh, for another one that I picked up at a flea market I bought this paper because I wanted to learn to do it myself now when I went to that route it took me a while to find out how to do it it seems like you know there's this big mystery on how to fold it unless you buy the paper from somebody who then they will provide you the instructions when you buy the paper and I just I wanted to know how to do it before I bought paper from from whoever you know why would you let me see let's take this off Let's see if the instructions are actually in here. Yeah, there's the instructions. I didn't even read those because I actually figured out how to do this. And I'm going to show it to you uh, right now. All right, so I'm going to use a dark, darker um, gel pen so that you can actually see the lines that I'm drawing on this. So you just draw a reference line on, on your, uh, and, and you'll do this, you can do this directly on this paper, or you can do it on a piece of standard paper and then cut it out and use it as a pattern, and that might be the easiest thing. So, what I'm going to do is get the get the blocks, and the, and because the paper will be shredded and and falling apart, this will usually be in two separate pieces. And I'm just going to measure with my ruler the length and the width. Okay, so this is one and three quarters by one and one quarter. Okay. All right. So basically, what you can do without even measuring too much is just put it down there on that line and draw lines around it, and then draw this direction. All right. So what this does is it gives me a 
a basic size and shape of paper. Alright, so I'm going to just fill those in with, with this ink so that you can see the lines. And notice in the center, even though I had this thing turned this way, I don't, I don't, in the center, I just want the width of it. So I'm going to draw straight across there. Okay. Now I'm going to find the center of this block, which would be because it's an inch and a quarter high, uh, wide. I'm going to come down five eighths of an inch, and that's the center line. Okay. I'm just going to uh, do the same thing over here on this end. Five eighths. So now I have a reference of the midpoint. And now to get, make sure that it's as long as it needs to be, I'm going to measure the thickness of both blocks together. This is a half of an inch. All right, on these particular blocks, it's a half of an inch. So I'm just going to come down here a quarter inch on each side of this center line. So there's my reference. I'm going to extend this center line out. And then what I'm going to do is draw from the corner of this center line the center the center box from the corner to the top line down to where it meets the center line all right i'm going to do that on all four of these corners in fact actually we should just draw the line all the way to that center block corner like so So now, this is the exact size that it's going to take to wrap all the way around this, okay? And right here at the, I'm going to call this the opening side, will be this center piece crossed here. And then this piece will come down the side, this tail end will wrap around it, okay? Notice... There's a piece of paper on the back, just a, just a straight piece back here as a hinge. And then they, then they applied this on. And you can glue this with wood glue, Elmer's glue. I wouldn't use anything like hot glue. I wouldn't use anything like epoxy. Um, you want it to be able to seal the edges all the way around. Notice how they just put about an eighth of an inch of paper over the edge of the wood. And, uh, and then, once you get it all around there, you want to, I, I just take a, uh, the straight edge, and I'll push it down right here in the middle. Just push it down as I fold it shut a little. And I do this slowly, and then I'll come and do it on the side, tuck it in, tuck it in, and then just fold it flat. In these, and it'll make this pleat inside there. And that's it. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the bellows chamber from and I'm just going to I just slid it off that nail. You probably see that nail is still in is still in there. I think it's probably too small for you to see, but I'll remove this side as well. So 
So now I have both of the bellows chambers removed from the clock. I don't want to lose my screws, so I'm going to put them in a little baggie. One thing you're going to want to do is at the top of these, before you glue these bellows back on, is we're going to clean excess glue.